Let's plot velocity profiles such as this one. And for that, we'll have to create a line uh, like that and then extract velocity along that line. Go to CFD post and to create a line along which we want to extract the velocity, I'll, I'll select location line and I'll call that X um, 0.4. So I'll create a line at X equal to 0 0.4 and I can't do dot, so I'll say P. Okay, so that stands for 0 0.4, and that goes from x equal to 0 0.40 to x equal to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, the y at our upper edge is uh, 0.5, and I will select 400 samples. Now I have 100 grid points along y, but they are not distributed evenly. So to have enough samples within the boundary layer, I'll oversample relative to the number of grid points and I'll say apply. And if I hide the pressure contours, I can see the location that I just created. So let's extract the U velocity along that line. For that, I'll go to the chart option and I'll give it an appropriate name. I'll say velocity profiles and under data series I will create I'll select the location that I just created uh, along the horizontal axis I want the velocity u along the vertical axis I want y distance y and I'll say apply and I get the velocity profile so at the plate it's zero and then it increases as I move uh, away from the plate in the y direction. Now, the boundary layer theory, you know, you expect it to go to one. Here it's overshooting by about 10% and then it decays to one. Now, this overshoot at first was confusing to me and then I talked to a colleague and we were able to convince ourselves that um, this, you know, is an artifact of the displacement thickness of the boundary layer. It's a finite Reynolds number effect as you increase the Reynolds number, this overshoot becomes smaller and smaller. Uh, more on that later. And we can, you know, zoom into the, the view near the boundary layer. So I can go and change the y-axis range. So I will deselect that and say the y-axis range goes from 0 to 0 0.4. Apply. Um, Actually, I will say 0 to 0.2, apply, and um, so that, that gives me the variation near the, the plate a little bit better. Let me add a second profile at x equal to 0 0.8. So I'll go to my location here, right click and say duplicate, and I'll call that x 0 p8 for 0 0.8 and then double click on the new entity. Make sure you're editing the new entity. The double clicking, <laughs> I tend to forget. And I'll say that's 0.8, sorry. That's 0.8, that's 0.8. Apply, if I go to 3D Viewer, I can see my second location. So I'll come back to Chart Viewer. Um, I will double click on Velocity Profiles and go under data series, add the second line by clicking here and then select the second location, okay? And you can see because of the effect of the boundary layer thickening, um, the, the velocity profile of the second location looks like that. And here you see the boundary layer thickness around, you know, the boundary layer ends around here, which is y equal to, close to 0.05. So that is in the same ballpark as our estimate for the boundary layer thickness at the end of the plate using boundary layer theory. It's better to make these plots in terms of non-dimensional variables and that's generally true. So instead of plotting it versus u, it's better to plot it versus u over u infinity. And this one, it's better to plot it as y over l. Now here, u infinity and l are one, so our values won't change, um, but you know that's not generally true. 
So I'll show you how to change this variable to a user-defined variable, uh, u over u infinity, and you can do the same thing for, for this axis too. So to create my own variable, first I need to create an expression. So I'll go under the Expressions tab, right-click anywhere, say New, and I will say U non-dime expression, and I'll say OK. And if I right-click, I can pick the variable, uh, any variable. So I'll pick velocity U and then divide it by U infinity, which is one meter per second. And CFD post expects uh, units in this fashion. And so now I have a non-dimensional variable, uh, our expression, and from that expression, I create my own variable. I was playing around with it, so I have it over here. So I'll just delete that, and I'll create my own um, variable. So I can right-click anywhere, say new. I'll call this u non-dime. And then I'll say create that from the ex, from my user defined expression, and say apply. So now I have my user defined variable u over u infinity. So I can go to outline, double click on velocity profiles, and under x axis, if I right click here, change that from velocity u to u non dimensional, and I'll say OK, apply, and go to chart viewer. And you see now it's u over u infinity, and I can do the same thing over here. And I can prettify this plot, and I'll show you what I did. Okay, that's my prettified plot. So you see I changed the labels, and I can do that by coming into the axis and saying, uh, deselecting use data for axis labels and, and giving it my own label. I don't think I can get Greek letters, so I just use I and F for infinity. Uh, I can change the legends. Um, that I do by going under line display and deselecting use series name for a legend name and then giving my own legend name. Uh, I increase the font size, which I can do under chart display. I like 18 or 16 point font. Um, especially if you're including it in, in a PowerPoint or something, this is much more visible. And I also made these lines fatter by going into line display and selecting, you know, the, um, I, I can select the, the line size and the line type. Um, the, actually the line size I select over here and the line type, I can, you know, do dash, for instance, by going to um, this particular tab. And you see it's it's nice to get a dash because uh, that way, if it's a two black and white plot, you can still distinguish between the two curves. So that's a good practice to make your, you know, your plot legible, neatly labeled, and non-dimensionalized. And I'll say File. Um, save project.